Hey there, welcome to 50 Question Friday, number 22 uh, for November 20th. All right, so hope everybody is doing good. It's been quite the time for sure. It's been a great time, really. As long as you keep stepping above everything, <laughs> you know. Um, seeing if we have any questions here on the internet first, but otherwise, uh, please do type in your questions here on the questions tab for us, and we will catch any that come through on the internet first. And it looks like we have just a couple of questions on the internet, but they are more in depth, um, kind of more personal questions. So we'll address those not here. All right. Well, hey guys. So it's good to see you guys here all this morning. Um, Stephanie, Malik, Marsha, gosh, let's, uh, Christopher. Um, so I guess I'm not sure where to go this morning. Um, don't have any questions on the internet. So if you guys have some questions, be sure to jot them down here. Um, let's see, we did a sacred space, the heart video. Um, Brenda did one the other day last week. So I'm not sure if you've seen that yet or not. I don't remember if we had it for last 50 question Friday. I think we might've done it afterwards, but, um, there is a, a new video. It's like a minute and a half long. It is the sacred space of the heart. And it's just simply Brenda walking into the heart space, um, just giving you more simple, easy techniques to do so. So please do check out that sacred space of the heart video. Um, you know, it seems like right now is definitely the time to be doing the release that everything is being held for us to do that release work. So as things come up, whether it is situations, whether it is your reactions to situations, to people, um, keep a good eye on that because your reactions is what you're carrying to release. So anytime anybody reacts you, whether it's whatever it is, that's that's yours to look and to release and we don't have to wallow in it we don't have to put it on the back burner and do it when we feel we have the time and energy to do it when something comes up just stop and just take those three quick breaths go into the heart space ask your soul to be before you and release that's simple. It really is right now. It's it's that simple to release. Um, let's see. Some questions. How long does it take to restructure three gallons of water? Um, basically, you can use any size of the, the tensor rings. Um, the tensor fields are going to take about four to six hours to physically restructure your water. Um, and even our smaller, you know, three inch, um, water rings can work with three gallons of water you know, you can actually charge like the five gallon jugs that, you know, we use here for aquariums and such the five gallon plastic jugs. You can set a, just a simple three inch ring on there and charge that in that four to six hours. Um, Let's see, John's asking, could I comment on the products you have for sale today? Um, yes, so we actually have here on the November 20th, we have our one day sale going on for um, the quantum grid point, the little, the little pyramid, the little Oregon pyramid, which is pretty phenomenal. That's for your environmental. Um, basically, you just set it, it expands the size of the home, it brings through those higher vibration frequencies, it brings through a lot of support for those within the field who wish to connect and to do the work that support is there um, with those little quantum grid point pyramids one of the other um, tools that comes in that is the the clasp the heca clasp and that's the silver regeneration that is a phenomenal one um, just carrying that is going to work with work with your entire body physically mentally emotionally and that higher connection um, then there is 
the silver quantum healer this little guy comes with that kit that's on sale today and this is an amazing amazing tool the quantum healers i mean just carrying these on your person is pretty phenomenal um and then it can be used actively as as a wand as well um and then the last tool that comes there is the little um infinity which the infinity that comes in that kit that's on sale today it actually comes with an adjustable choker chain uh but it is this illuminated heart which is another really fantastic tool um so those are the products that come together in a kit that are on sale today there for john um and then bryson asking about black friday specials yeah so basically um what we're doing this year is we're going to be offering these little um, flash sale kits and um, just little tool packages that are on flash sale um, we're going to be doing that from now all the way through black friday and black friday weekend um and don't tell anybody else but cyber monday is the day so yeah cyber monday is when we're having our store-wide sale and um, we've been just doing a lot of teaser things up until that point. So, um, yeah, Cyber Monday. But don't tell anybody else that I told you that. Like, our, oh, wait, our computer guy is already on here, Randy. He knows. <laughs> Whoops. I let the cat out of the bag this morning. Um, but that's just for you guys here to know. Uh, let's see. Bill has a question. Good morning, Brian. What's the latest discovery at Twisted Sage? You know, we're still waiting for this new ring to come in. Of course, we we found these guys, which we made here a few weeks ago, that are anchoring in all frequencies and properties ever created in the tensor fields. I mean, that is in this little guy, but we're, we're not releasing this. Um, we're just playing with this right now because we really don't know about this ring. And so this is a culmination of everything that's been created, tensor field wise, etheric template wise, all the way back pre-Egyptian, Atlantean, all this stuff. But there is a new ring coming in, something that is new to new to us, new to new to this earth, new to this universe. Um, whatever this new ring is that's coming in. Um, it's, it's there, but we're just not able to bring it in yet. It's like it is on this other plane, so to speak. And we're here and it's, to me, it feels like as soon as we are able to intersect or come close to that plane, then we'll be able to pull it in and anchor in those new energies. So don't know, there's new energies coming in at some point in time, Bill, and we really don't know when that's going to happen. Um, you know, even like the the um, regeneration ring, gosh, that one, when it came in, we didn't release that one for six months, you know, because we were doing the work with it. But um, I have a feeling when this new ring comes in, it'll just be ready to release. But we'll definitely keep everybody updated on that. Um, and then Robert asks, what parts of the Ascension Pyramid would you recommend getting first if you can't afford the entire set at the moment? You know, for the Ascension Pyramids, really the most the, the most expensive part of that pyramid is usually the Taurus, um, the Cosmic Sun Disk. And truly that Cosmic Sun Disk is a powerful piece. Um, it, it's an amazing piece. So yeah, the Cosmic Sun Disk is what I would suggest getting first in that pyramid set, um, you know, for your Ascension Pyramids. And of course, that three inch cosmic sun disk will work for those sets, but gosh, I really recommend getting that larger cosmic sun disk. Um, not only does it fit in that pyramid structure so well, because we've updated those pyramid structures and how that basket, that cradle holds that sun disk and it holds it in there just beautifully and tight. It just doesn't come out. Um, so yeah, I'd really recommend that that eight inch sun disc um, as, as the first tool. And again, it is a little more spendy, um, but when you, you know, you do get that, that connection with Brenda too, when she makes that for you. Um, 
Let's see. Marsha, I bought the 29 inch golden fire ring. How long should I leave it around my crystals to clear them? Um, I also use it at night and place it on my headboard. I sleep so much better. Thank you. Yay. Good to hear that. Um, so for crystals, when you put any of the rings around a crystal, um, you know, it'll take, it does not take very long. It just takes mere seconds for the energetics, uh, for the energetic clearing of crystals to take. Now, if you want to leave those crystals in this column for longer, it's pretty fantastic because it's kind of like working with us or with water uh, with, you know, like the regeneration ring um, and even the golden fire ring, but especially the regeneration ring or even the harmonic creation field trio, the set of three rings in that when you're working with the crystals, it is going to connect them higher. It is going to bring you through their higher connection, just like it does with water, just like it does with the human. Um, so leaving it with your crystals, you know, a couple hours at the most, but really within just uh, seconds, you're going to get the, the clearing work done with your crystals. Uh, let's see. I'm curious if you can look and see. So Christopher, um, Wolf Eagle standing, asking about um, taking a look and, and seeing what's happening there. Um, I tell you what, Christopher, let's, um, let's connect mono a mono and um, I'll see if I can take a look and see what's happening there. Um, Sherry, absolutely love the silver Taurus pendant. I'm productive without being stressed or tired. Miss the comforting feeling from my infinite pendant. Have you ever worn them together? Yeah, I've totally wore the um, the Taurus pendant and the infinite light pendant together. Um, you know, it's kind of amazing when you do wear the two together and you take off the infinite light pendant. It's it's almost like you can feel that kind of you know, raising you up just because you're wearing only the Taurus pendant. Um, but yes, and I, I do understand of, about the whole thing of, um, you know, having that comforting feeling from the infinite light pendant. But, you know, I've also added the illuminated heart with my Taurus pendant and, of course, the quantum healer. Um, and then the quantum healer to any of your pendants really is um it, it brings to that calming feeling that you were describing uh, marla i just love the 50 questions friday what do you what tool do you recommend for me to project long distance healing and comfort from my 96 year old mom i have many of your tools um you know marla i would say the it, it feels like you have the golden fire and light wand um that one just comes up as a good one for you to hold the space there with her. Um, you know, that's basically, if we can just go into our own heart, make that sacred space, just using a bubble, making your sacred space. Um, and whatever tools that you have of the Twisted Sage tools, you can bring those into the bubble. And then you can just invite that person to step into that bubble as well. And, um, you know, and just because the tools are fantastic for holding space for others, but it, nothing really truly is more powerful than your heart and your light and your love that you have. So bringing the person into your bubble and being in the heart space and just seeing them there, um, you can do that infinite heart with them, just connecting your heart to their heart. Um, you can totally use the tools though, because that's kind of what I was saying, I don't have one laying here, but it's just using that golden fire and light wand, the brass wand, um, or the quantum healer, they're the same thing. Um, and just holding that space for them to be within that column of light. Um, so, I mean, there, there really is a lot that you can do to hold that space for another person, but really the, the biggest thing is just soul to soul, heart to heart. Um, 
Let's see. Question the old harmony generators that you put in the, the ascension chambers. So um, the question is, is asking about, we used to make these um, 24 inch um, tensor field generators out of the harmony ring. And they would go in the base of the ascension um, chambers. Actually, the um, we use the Harmony Gaia sphere. We always use the Gaia sphere at the base of those older stand-up chambers. And then we put a generator out up on top of the generators. Um, and the field of range of those larger ones really was a lot smaller than the 12 mile range of influence of a standard seven and a half inch Harmony generator. The seven and a half inch harmony generator does have that sphere of influence of about 12 miles. But then there's something that occurs after you start making those larger ones, um, even in a heavier gauge. It's like they don't have the same sphere of influence. They're, um, they're a lot smaller. So those larger generators that we made for the chambers, their sphere of influence is, you know, like maybe a mile. Um, they we've just never seen that size equate size of the field and a lot of times it's actually counterintuitive to what you would think that the larger ones actually are creating a smaller sphere of influence um not sure what the secret formula to that is let's see jump back over here to the chat side and see what's happening um So let's see, somebody is also asking if they can use the water rings to transform electromagnetic fields. Um, and sorry, I can't see the link that you're trying to share there, but yes, totally. Um, the water rings are exactly the same as any of the rings. So a golden fire water ring is simply a tighter twist, lighter gauge than a larger golden fire ring they're all the same energetically and they're going to do all the same work. The only reason that we use that lighter gauge with water is because water does not require as strong of a field and strong as in on the physical. So when we get into the heavier gauge rings, again, the heavier gauge is just more, you can feel it more tangibly on the physical, but energetically it's going to be the exact same as a lighter gauge ring. Um, Okay, somebody just got their wand yesterday. <laughs> awesome. Yes, have fun with these tools. They do amazing, amazing work. Um, all right. So it looks like we are just about out of questions here. Um, let's see. Yeah, that sacred space of the heart. So the, the work that, you know, we've been doing with consciousness, of course, the tools are great. They're holding space, um, is going into the heart space, soul before you and asking the soul to do the release work, to, to release those things that come up for your, um, anytime that you react, that you have a reaction, um, stop. Go into the heart space, take the three breaths, that breath from earth into the heart, that breath from creation into the heart, that third breath, bring them both into your heart and be in that support for you. And that brings your light in more and that brings you into the heart. So when you take those three breaths and then just say soul before me, and just imagine that golden luminescent being, or maybe it's an orb. You, know, you don't have to see or imagine, but just know that your soul is before you and ask the soul to release those things that came up. Actually, every time you do this exercise, ask the soul to release all energies that no longer serve you because everything is truly energy. Um, and so that way we don't have to be specific and get just what it is that we had a reaction to. And we don't have to get into the mental and be like, okay, this is because of this, this, and this. Okay, soul, remove this, this, and this. No, keep it open-ended 
and just ask soul to remove all energies that no longer serve you. Um, it's huge. It really is. And that's, gosh, that's what we need to be doing right now. Um, there's, there's a lot happening in the world. And as always, it's, it's beautiful. Um, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot happening here, but the higher we step up here, you know, oh my goodness, it's a whole different perspective, you guys, when we're not here and immersed in all the crap that's going on in the world. You know, just let it all go and step up here, be in the heart, be here, and it'll be a whole different perspective. Um, and then try not to see the world the same way from there, because in, in all actuality, there are some beautiful things taking place. There's a lot of celebration going on. Um, it's It really is a beautiful time, you guys. So just, you know, keep heart, keep above it all, hold space for yourself and your family. Um, all right, so let's see uh, a couple more questions here before we go. Would you recommend the large or small regeneration Gaia sphere? Does one feel better or more physical than the other? Um, <clears throat> you know, for the regeneration Gaia spheres, um, I like the three inch one personally, the three inch one to me, I just like how it feels probably just because you can keep it in your hand. Um, you know, I keep it right up above my head at night. Um, you know, that three inch regeneration Gaia sphere. I do like that one a lot. Um, the eight inch one, it's the same to me. They feel the same energetically. It's just the eight inch one, you know, it's, it's large and, you know, it's a little bit tougher to carry and to use. So the three inch one is absolutely perfect. Um, and again, if you're using the Ascension pyramids, it doesn't matter whether you're using the eight inch or the three inch um, Gaia sphere or cosmic sun disc, they're both going to be energetically the same within that pyramid structure. Um, the only reason that we use the eight inch one on the larger pyramids is an aesthetic thing. It just looks a lot better with the larger one. But um, yeah, I like that three inch regeneration Gaia. Um, let's see. And then Marsha wanted to share something. Recently bought two silver quantum healers and took them to a local jewelry bead shop and had her attach earring posts. They look great as earrings. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yep, I agree. I think the quantum healers would make fantastic earrings. Um, one of these days, we're going to be opening up a whole new website called Dakota Sage. And that is where we're going to be gearing towards all of our non-woo-woo friends in the world and get them the tools. And we'll make things like cowboy clasps and, you know, earrings. And maybe we'll make quantum healer earrings for that website. That sounds fantastic. Um, and then let's see, Bill, I have a set of spurling rings on the floor where I sit. Please comment on the value of having them around. So, okay, so the, the spurling rings, um, you know, they're, again, they were very much a very top of the line frequency at that time. We have shifted so much in frequencies. So to me, really, a lot of these tools that were created 10 years ago, eight years ago, five years ago, even two years ago for me, um, they all have a certain bandwidth of frequency and they can take a person who is at a certain bandwidth and raise them up to that bandwidth. But if you're here, you don't want that bandwidth of frequency. Um, you know, it's going to be an individual thing on whether those tools are still beneficial for you and your growth. Um, I can't, I can't use any, I can't use the 144 or the 188. They just, you know, it's just doesn't, doesn't feel right for me personally. But Bill, what you can do, if you have those spurling rings, what I would suggest is to get like one of our tiny little golden fire Wi-Fi rings, put that right in with those rings anywhere inside of that hoop. And 
then that golden fire will act. Um, it'll come through the rest of that field. So then those fields from those spurling rings are still going to be holding the sacred space, but you can raise the frequency and vibration of that space by putting some higher frequency tools within there. Whether there are tools or crystals or other tools, doesn't matter. Just find the ones that are more resonant with you at this now time. Put those within that spurling ring and that will amplify that whole field. So, you know, you can totally keep using those spurling rings. Um, and yeah, just add a little Wi-Fi ring to it, a generation ring. Um, and it will it will shift the energetics. All right. We going back to chat again here. All right. Yay. Thank you guys all for being here and for being here in support um, for not only for Twisted Sage, but each other here. I know um, a lot of you guys have started to make friends here. So I do appreciate that. You know, you guys are able to um, have these chats and opportunities. <laughs> Sherry, could this go to Sage? potentially have charm bracelets. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We we don't know what the product line is really going to be yet there. Um, and that's kind of on a back burner project right now. Um, after Christmas, we were hoping to have all this done before Christmas. But you know, uh, <laughs> there's a lot in life happening right now. So um, we will have finger rings coming up sometime. I'm hoping um, Again, we were hoping before Christmas, but that's not happening. Our finger rings are still in the process, you guys, and we are going to have sized finger rings, copper versions first, um, in half and whole sizes. And it'll be probably closer to the new year when those come out, but we will definitely have finger rings. Um, and then we'll get the silver ones going after that. So it's, you know, it's just quite a process to get rings made in size so um, but yep they're coming and um let's see so yeah the finger rings we were actually able to put all the frequencies that come from twisted sage studios currently are all found in these finger rings so that's going to be kind of a nice thing that it's going to be our first ring that we're going to have out that will actually contain all the frequencies and properties of the tools that we create are going to be found in those finger rings. And so that's, that's pretty darn exciting too. Um, so yeah. Awesome. And yeah, Malik, we definitely gonna need some wire wrapping. <laughs> um, well, gosh, again, good to see you guys. Oh, we got one more question that came in here. Let me check. Will the finger rings come in clasp versions also? Um, no, the finger rings right now are just going to be the solid finger ring style. Um, the clasp versions, um, we've we've been experimenting with that one here for, for a good year or so on, on making the clasp version that you can do a wrap on that can be like a sizable ring, but they're just not comfortable, um, you know, and so yeah we we always make sure that we try out all these things first so i mean we have everybody at twisted sage that are guinea pigs trying out tools all the time and um once we get them refined refined a little bit then we start getting them out to some others in our circle until we finally are able to work all the kinks out of them and release them so um again i think by the new year we'll have finger rings ready um and anyway awesome you guys thanks again for your support for being here um you know and thank you for your support that you give to humanity and to the world because um the more we can keep our frequencies up there in reaching doing the release work doing the clearing work doing all of our self work, the more we can do that, the more we are helping the entire collective. 
So for all of us who want to change the world, oh man, yeah, we gotta we gotta do ourselves and our families first. So thank you very much. All right. Um, happy Turkey Day, you guys. I won't be here next Friday. Um, my birthday is actually on American Turkey Day this year, so I'm going to, and my daughter is going to go to Missouri to see her grandparents. And so instead of hanging out for Turkey Day here with my family, I'm going to take my motorcycle and go to Arizona for the weekend. And you can, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ride a motorcycle in Arizona all weekend. So I won't be here Friday. Um, that is absolutely my my therapy, my meditation, and my release work is riding a motorcycle, you know, um, and that's it. So finding the meditation, your walking meditation, your living meditation in life where you can be in the heart where, you know, it's, that's, that's the time that we need to give ourselves. Um, anyway, take care of you guys. Good to see you and we'll see you in December.